Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. I am back with another interesting topic in the Tosca automation playlist. We are continuing with the test automation obstacle list, which is provided in the obstacle course provided by Tricentis. Now we have already looked at the first obstacle, which was IDs are not everything, which means you should not always depend on the ID property for any particular control. You can also use different uh, properties to identify your controls using Tosca. So now let's go on to the next obstacle, which is known as twins. Okay. And uh, this will look pretty similar to the previous obstacle. And you would think that you can still go ahead and use the same way like you used in the previous obstacle to automate this particular problem. But let's uh, first scan this module and then I will tell you what is the challenge here and why we cannot follow the same process again. So I'm going back to my Tosca here and I'm going to scan this particular application to create a new module here. Okay, so I will be going into the advanced view. And if you looked at the obstacle, we have to automate a test step that clicks on the button labeled, I am the one, the second one on the right hand side. Okay, so we have to click on the second one. And you can see these are exactly the same buttons. And even the label is same. Okay, so which means the inner text will also be the same. So in the previous example or in the previous obstacle, we use the inner text and uh, some other properties to identify the control, which was pretty similar to the other control. But here you will not even find the inner text through which you can identify this particular control. So let's look at the module to have a better idea. So these are the two links which we are talking about. And uh, here you can see uh, the ID is ID. The inner text is this, I am the one and the tag is A. Right, And then uh, if I go to the next one, so here also you will see it is ID and the inner text is also the same and the tag is also the same, okay? Now, if I have to uh, select this particular link, okay, the second one, then you will look here that the selected item is not unique, obviously, right? Now, even if I select inner text or inner HTML, still uh, the item is not unique, okay? So even if I select multiple uh, properties here, it is not making uh, the control unique. So you cannot uh, implement the same method here. You need to think of other solutions. So there are actually two solutions for this particular challenge, okay? The first one is uh, the most simple one, but it is not the recommended one. And I will tell you why. So if I go to identify by properties currently, which uh, it is here, right? And if I can go to identify by index, okay? And I can select the index and that will make this control unique because it will select uh, the second index. But what if uh, there are more uh, similar links which have been introduced into the page, okay? Then uh, this particular test case will fail, okay? Because it depends on the index. And it is not the most reliable solution, okay? It is one of the solutions, but it is not the most reliable solution. So instead of that, uh, let's deselect this index and let's go back to our properties. Now, what we are going to do is uh, we are going to look at these control, okay? And we are trying to find any particular control which can help us identify this control, okay? Like a parent control. So I'm going to increase this filtered items to see more controls on this page, okay? So I'm going to take this to the last but one level on the filtered items. And now I can see more uh, parent and child items which are present here or controls, right? So this is uh, my control and uh, you can see this control is nested inside a parent container, okay? And the same uh, applies for the other link as well or other button. It is also uh, inside another parent container, okay? So what I want to see is whether this parent container can help me identify this particular item or control, okay? So if I select this, 
uh, here, uh, if I go here, you will see that in the ID of this container, this one is the right. Okay, so this is the value of the ID for this particular container. And if I look at this particular container, then here you can see the ID is empty, okay? But um, if I select this particular container now, okay? Now, um, if you select this particular control inside this container, you will see that um, this item is unique, okay? Why? Because um, it is inside a container which we have selected, which is already unique, okay? Because it has got a unique ID. And that is why it is uh, able to identify this control uniquely, even though it has got no unique properties, okay? So sometimes you need to look further than that particular element. You need to look at the parent elements. You need to look at other elements, which can help you identify your current element, okay? So using this, uh, we can easily identify this particular control. So uh, let's go ahead and save this now. And I'm going to close this module and we are just going to quickly create a test case for this and run this, okay? Just to make sure that it is working as expected. So I'm going to rename this modules and then I'm going to create a test case in our obstacles folder. So let's create a test case here and I'm going to rename this and then I'm going to drag this module right down here. And you can see the container and the link here. And we need to click it here, right? So again, I'm going to use the X instead of the click, right? Um, and then you can see here, uh, Tosca automatically sets the action mode to select for this particular container. And then inside this, it will click on this link, okay? So I will name this, click on the second link, okay? And then I'm going to set this work state to completed. So following all the best practices on this particular test case. Now let's go ahead and quickly run this to verify that it runs as expected, okay? So as you can see, it clicked on the second link, which was expected, and then uh, the challenge was completed. Again, this was not the most difficult obstacle. As you can see in the obstacle list, it is marked as easy, but you need to know uh, the way uh, you can solve this particular problem. And as I said, there are two solutions, but you need to choose the best solution, which is more reliable and which is more sustainable. That's all for this particular video. If you have any questions, then please leave it in the comments. If you like this video, then please subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.